If you can draw this diagram, you understand a scientific organization of immunity. Immunity is either innate or adaptive. Innate immunity is like when you first had chickenpox and you eventually fight it off. The second time you get chickenpox, your immune system has learned from the first exposure and supplements the innate response with an adaptive response to more effectively fight it off. Both innate and adaptive immunity consist of humoral and cellular components. The cellular component involves big cells you can see under a microscope. Too small to be easily seen under a microscope are the individual proteins that are inside cells and can get released to fight infection. These immune molecules float outside the cell in your body's fluids or humors. So, this dreaded diagram really has four quadrants. Innate humoral, adaptive humoral, innate cellular, and adaptive cellular. Let's look at each quadrant in turn. The innate humoral component involves complement. Complement non-specifically fights infections. Complement disrupts foreign cells by complexing to attack foreign cells' membranes. The adaptive humoral component involves antibodies, which you've probably heard of before. The cellular aspect involves cells, which have a lot of scary names. The innate cellular part of immunity can be remembered by mono kills granny. Mono kills granny. Mono means monocytes, which grow up to be macrophages, which eat bad cells, and dendritic cells, which present antigens so other cells can kill them. Remember, mono kills granny. Mono kills granny. So after mono is kill. This refers to natural killer cells. Natural killer cells release proteins that kill bad cells. Mono kills granny. Granny stands for granulocytes. Granulocytes are cells that have grains inside them. There are two types of grainy cells, mast cells and the fills. Mast cells release its grains during allergies. You may have heard of histamine for mast cells. The fills refer to acidophil, neutrophil, and basophil. Phil means love, like a philosopher loves truth and a pedophile loves children. The fills love certain pHs so much that when you stain them at the correct pH, they will happily change color to express their love. Quick review before the last quadrant. Immunity is innate or adaptive. Innate and adaptive are divided into humoral or cellular. We know that innate humoral involves complement. Adaptive humoral involves antibodies. Innate cellular involves mono kills granny. Monocytes grow up to be macrophages or dendritic cells. Kill refers to natural killer cells, and granny refers to either mast or fill cells. Now let's look at the last quadrant, adaptive cellular immunity. The adaptive cellular quadrant involves B cells or T cells. B cells grow up to be plasma cells or other types of B cells, such as memory B cells. Plasma cells produce antibodies. These antibodies float around in the blood plasma. In fact, you may remember antibody as part of the adaptive humoral system. T cells are divided into cytotoxic T cells and helper T cells. Cytotoxic T cells actually kill bad cells. Helper T cells help other cells do their immuno jobs. If you have bad helper T cells, like in AIDS, you'll have immune problems. To review a scientific organization of the immune system, innate or adaptive, cellular or humoral, there are four quadrants. Innate humoral involves complement. Adaptive humoral involves antibodies. Innate cellular involves mono kills granny. Adaptive cellular involves B and T cells, with T cells either helping or killing. Now that you can draw this diagram, you can continue your immunology learning without drowning in terminology soup.